Greetings, it's a naturopath from New Zealand, Eric Becker, author of Candida Crusher, and I'm the formulator of Candida, the Candida dietary supplements of choice. Thanks for checking out my video today. I'm going to do a frequently asked question. Well, I think I might have answered this one before in a video, but I've got an email here from a lady called Julie, and Julie is in North Carolina. So Julie's asking me, Eric, can you give me some really good hints and tips on how I can improve my digestive function, my bowel function, how I can just get things working inside. So, <clears throat> okay, Julie, let's just explain to you some concepts from my book, Candida Crusher. I'll go into them in a little bit of detail. So this will be quite a good video for you um, to sort of give you the kind of reasoning that I give to my patients when they come and see me in my clinic or on Skype. These are the sort of things I try and really get through to people. So this video is called really uh, the 12 tips on how to improve your digestive and bowel function. So tip number one, Add fermented and cultured foods to your diet. So I'm going to read some bits and pieces out of my book here and then add commentary to it. So you have just started to read a section on fermented and cultured foods and it doesn't make sense to doesn't it make sense to start including some of these into your diet? So you know, taking probiotics is a very powerful way to take concentrated amounts of beneficial bacteria in, but taking prebiotic um, um, foods, which I've spoken of before, is essential. But taking cultured and fermented foods is also essential. Cultured and fermented foods really, besides adding you know, reasonable amounts of beneficial bacteria, they also give our digestive system lactic acid, which is really a fuel for lactobacillus to feed on. So they tend to also favorably uh, affect the pH balance of the gut, further allowing bacteria to grow, the good ones. And they also uh, give us lots of fiber to help bulk up our bowel motions, to make us feel full, and to slow down, you know, how much food we're going to eat. So cultured and fermented foods, prebiotic foods and probiotics in general are real smart for you to do, Julie, because they're going to help you to maintain weight, give you energy, reduce bloating and gas, get rid of constipation, diarrhea, and you know what? That's also going to help prolong your life. Studies from Bulgaria from a long time ago show that people who eat yogurt in their diet live on average five to ten years longer than people who don't eat yogurt. So another good reason to add these foods into your diet. So a good way to begin to incorporate these foods into your diet is to include a small portion, about three to four tablespoons of natural yogurt into your diet each day. So if you're a person who's not consumed yogurt previously or not had it for a while, don't start eating large amounts of it. Eat small amounts every day consistently and this way you'll slowly convert the gut and make it a lot easier for you to adapt to these kind of foods in your diet. Not all yogurt is created equal. Some brands are laden with artificial sugars uh, and don't contain any bacteria at all. So just watch out. <clears throat> if in doubt, make your own yogurt. So, and there are other kinds of foods you can have too you know, in your diet in this realm that cultured and fermented. So you can read about that at yeastinfection.org. Number two, slowly begin adding soluble and insoluble fibers to your diet. It never ceases to amaze me how many patients I've seen over the years who simply don't eat much fruit at all. Perhaps one piece every so often. And the vegetables they consume are either bought frozen and consumed after having been boiled or microwaved. Fruits and vegetables contain some of the best levels of soluble and insoluble fiber you can get. Be sure to read what I've written also on fiber on yeastinfection.org. And you might find some videos I've done on fiber uh, in the Candida Crusher channel. There are so many ways you can increase the amount of fiber you take in, but once again, go easy. <clears throat> You've heard it all before. A go low and go slow is my motto when it comes to making any changes to diet and digestion in general. It is a fact that most people eat a very small amount of fiber, 20 to 40 grams per day. When if you compare that with people in underdeveloped nations, they could eat 100 grams plus per day. They have smaller bowel motions more frequently and a lot of these people also tend to maintain their weight more easily and they never have digestive problems. A good friend of mine who worked in Africa for 20 plus years and then moved over to uh, Europe, practiced in, in Ireland, uh, once told me that he never saw one case of bowel cancer in 20 years uh, living in remote parts and practicing in remote parts of Africa. Never saw one case of bowel cancer. And that's because of the fiber you know, uh, that these people consume to a big degree. <clears throat> so start by including small amounts of beans, lentils, fruit, but of course wait for candida to improve before you put you know, too much fruit into your diet. 
vegetables, raw or partially cooked are best. Seeds, whole grains, brown rice, quinoa, amaranth, millet are best grains. And continue to add these foods slowly over two to three weeks until you sort of adapt to these kind of fibers. <clears throat> so you'll, you want to eat less, lose weight, feel full and improve your bowel tone, if that's what your objection is. Then eat more soluble fiber. These foods include pears, strawberries, kiwi fruit, carrots, psyllium, slippery on bark powder, lentils, rolled oats, and cucumber. <clears throat> Soluble fiber fills you up and it swells in your gut because it can hold water more uh, readily. So you'll feel fuller. So you want to bulk up your bowel motions and maybe clean out that lazy bowel, especially if you had a bit of constipation. Then try including insoluble fiber in your diet. These foods include brown rice, onions, leafy green vegetables like broccoli and spinach, celery, cracked wheat. I love making tabbouleh. I soak cracked wheat and then mix it with lots of finely chopped up uh, parsley and mint. And I put some tomatoes and spring onions through that and lots of lemon juice and olive oil. It's a beautiful dish. It's called tabbouleh. Very, in fact, I had some for lunch today. It's very tasty. Chia seeds are also a good source of uh, of these kind of insoluble fibers and nuts and seeds and whole grains. <clears throat> so you want to reduce the amount of gas and bloating you have and feed up the good bacteria. Then I recommend you consume a combination of fermented and cultured foods, you know, as in point one, uh, as well as foods that contain prebiotics. And I've done a video on that. These are the foods that contain oligosaccharides, fructo oligosaccharides and galacto oligosaccharides. So check that video out. Uh, where was I? So remember the prebiotic feed the probiotic. Jerusalem artichokes, onions, garlics, scallions, spring onions, uh, sweet potatoes, uh, many different kinds of foods like that, which are going to really help uh, to, you know, to clean that bowel out and reduce bloating and gas. So point number three, cut back on sugar and fat in your diet. You really don't want to put sugar in your diet. I eat small amounts of honey. I'm a beekeeper and I love honey, so I'll have uh, honey in my diet, but often my honey will be mixed with pollen and a bit of beeswax. Um, it's a very, very healthy food to have indeed. I always have honey on my porridge uh, in the morning or with my muesli. When you find a healthy gut like me, small amounts of honey don't give you bloating or gas. When you've got candida in your gut or SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, any kind of sugar, including honey, can give you a lot of gas and bloating because you're going to give these bugs or yeast something to really feed on. So if you've noticed that you've put honey in your diet, even a, a couple of teaspoons per day and you get a lot of bloating and gas, chuck the honey out, take it out temporarily for a while and start ch uh, chowing down on more garlic and the anti-candida foods that I've mentioned in other videos. So it's quite a simple achievement to cut back on sugar. Just reduce the amount of foods you buy and eat which contain sugar and fat especially the trans fats, you know, the, the, the bad fats. Be sure to read labels of processed foods you buy to see how much sugar and fat they contain. It won't be difficult for you to do this if you prepare your own meals with you know, lean meats and vegetables, in particular in grains, because you control what other ingredients go into your meals, not some factories. All right? The problem with foods containing sugars and fats is that they also contain lots of chemicals, artificial colors, flavors, and preservatives that you may not be aware of. So these things are not going to really work in well to beneficial bacteria. If you read a really wholesome fresh diet like I do, you'll have a really nice digestive system. There'll be plenty of enzymes in the food and lots of fibers, and there'll be natural sugars. Yes, there's even sugar in broccoli, but don't automatically assume that every single sugar is feeding material for candida, because that's simply not true. Drink water, number four. I know this sounds simple, but this is the one boosting health tip that many never seem to be able to achieve, is to drink more water. Even in the winter time, you can drink water. One of my patients recently said to me that she drinks um, quite a large amount of water in the shower. Well, that's quite okay to do, you know, especially if you have a shower in the morning. Morning is a great time to drink plenty of water because it helps to really clean out the gut, the digestive system. I tend to have about anywhere between four to five glasses of water per day. When the weather's hot, I drink lots of water. Be careful not to assume that tea and coffee and alcohol and soda drinks are water because they're not. They're dehydrating. 
So don't assume because you've had four cups of coffee in a day that you've had plenty of water to drink, right? For every cup of coffee you drink, I think you should drink two to three glasses of water. It's very important. Your digestive system will work a lot better, especially your stomach, pancreas and intestines. And although no proof exists that water actually aids digestion, I've certainly noticed that those with a yeast infection who drink water and not much coffee, tea and alcohol appear to have much less bother with digestive problems. Remember also that when you slowly add fiber, tip number two, that it really pays to drink plenty more water. Okay, it's like trying to mix cement without water. You chuck everything in the cement mixer and you don't put enough water in there, it's called clonk, or clonk. But if you put water in there, just the right consistency, you're going to get a beautiful blend with that cement mixer. I wrote a good article and I'll do a video on it on your stomach is like a cement mixer. I don't know if you've ever made concrete. I mean, I love landscaping and I've, I've made lots of batches of concrete for different jobs. And I found if you put too much gravel in there and too much water, it sloshes out. You know, you could sort of liken that to heartburn or reflux. If you don't put enough water in there, it's going to make the cement mixer go all funny. And a stomach with not enough lubrication and fluid in there is going to act quite strange and, and be possibly painful too. So don't overload the cement mixer, meaning don't overload the stomach. Small amounts, regularly, nice and easy to work with in the cement mixer. It mixes beautifully and it's easy to tip out. So a good analogy for the stomach. The best approach in improving our digestion is to cut back on sugary, salty and fatty foods, increase the number of vegetables and whole grains and lean meats, you know, fibers, things like that, and drink a plenty more water every day. Try this for 21 days and you'll be much surprised at the difference these simple diet tricks make. I keep telling you guys out there, it's not the complicated things that improve our health. It's the simple things that make us better. I want you to really understand that by doing the simple things really effectively and every day and making these habits habitual, your health is going to get better and better and better, especially your bowel health. Five, avoid three large meals a day and eat smaller meals. Three sort of small to medium meals. I like people to stay lean and hungry. I don't think it's good to eat in excess. And that's why I don't like going to these smorgasbords or these, these places where you can serve up yourself. Tracy and I recently went over to uh, visit her mom's uh, 70th birthday. So we went out for the night and we went to a buffet. And of course, what did I have at the buffet? What did normal people do at a buffet? What would you do if you had every kind of food on tap? You had oysters and roast beef and pork and you had you know, all the vegetables. You had um, uh, deep fried chips and fish and you had everything, soups, chowders. And then you had all the ice cream bar. Well, I ate like a pig. Of course I did. I stuffed my face. And you know what? All, all that evening, I had a really sore digestive system. And I had a lot of bowel motions the following day. I had a lot of bloating and gas. I felt like crap. But it tasted great on the night. Now, some people eat like that all the time. I eat like that once a year, if that. But, you know, that's what happens in a buffet. Now, some people tend to treat their diets like a buffet. Every time they go out, they look for bigger portion sizes or more meals. And there's a the great way to ruin your digestion is to continually eat too much food. I want you to eat smaller meals and to be lean and hungry. There's nothing wrong with being hungry. Being a little bit on the hungry side every now and then will allow your body sufficient, uh, the immune system and digestive system to become more efficient. You'll maintain your weight, you'll feel a lot better, and you'll sleep better. By eating smaller meals more frequently, you avoid overloading your digestive system. And because your body is better at digesting smaller meals in one sitting, you'll be improving the way your digestive organs work. So you'll make them more efficient. First, you need to figure out how much food you need to eat per meal then try and keep a regular schedule that your body can adjust to. This will take two to three weeks, but maybe even a month or more. So it takes time to get these habits right and also your portion sizes right. So don't be in a hurry. Right? But by cutting back immediately, uh, you know, if you look at your plate now, you could easily take 20, 30% off that portion size with each evening meal. That's going to make it a lot easier for your digestion to work. Right? So whatever you plate size is just reduce it slightly and over a period of time your stomach size will reduce to take the capacity of food. That might be the best advice yet that you've ever heard. All right. 
Number six, eat small amounts of lean protein. So look at the palm of your hand. And if you're a meat eater, that's the size of piece of meat you should be eating every day. Many adults simply eat way too much meat. And portion sizes are just too big. While protein is essential for good health, you'll find that smaller amounts of lean cuts are less likely to cause digestive discomfort like heartburn, bloating or gas. And will be a much quicker to digest as well. In general, high fat meats take longer to digest than low fat meats. So pork you know, or chicken with lots of skin on it will take longer to digest. So remember also, the wrong kind of fats and too much saturated animal fat will give you lots of bloating and gas and the wrong kind of bacteria as well. And you don't want to do that, right? Point number seven, chew food well. How can I forget to mention that it is important to chew proteins in particular more slowly? So meats, legumes, beans need to be chewed really, really thoroughly. Okay? You can chew vegetables a little bit less than you can the meats. So you really want to get lots of saliva in the protein and um, the starchy foods as well. You need to get a little saliva in there. So saliva already pre-digests food before it even goes further down. So eating over a computer is not paying attention to chewing and therefore not you know, producing enough saliva and therefore digestion will be impaired. You may have noticed um, eating when you're stressed uh, you know, or you're upset that you end up with a digestive pain and that's also uh, you know, because you're not chewing properly and also because your stomach's not producing enough acids at that point when you've got fear or a powerful emotion. So not only chewing properly, but also eating with the right kind of mindset is important. So eating dinner over watching the six o'clock news, who got shot or who's gay or who's having a relationship with some politician or some crap like that, it's not conducive to good health. Okay. Point eight. Try 30 minutes of exercise every single day. Did you know that those who walk daily have significantly better digestive health than those who don't walk? Maybe you're creating the sitting disease like I'm doing right now, just sitting in front of a computer all the time. You know, it could be social media, it could be part of your job. A lot of my clients in the US, and Canada, and many countries have got computer jobs. They'll sit seven, eight, nine, ten hours a day in front of a computer, and then furthermore, you know, that evening they'll be sitting there in front of the computer, you know, either on a screen now, the, the wide screen, or on the small screen, you know, do, again doing something else. Walking stimulates digestion and is one of the best things you can do to improve the tone of the small and large intestine. So if you're not in the habit of walking, try and get used to walking. A good little gadget to get to one of those Fitbits or a small device to put on your you know, wrist to see how many steps you take a day. 10,000 steps is the minimum. So try and be active. In the old days, it was quite common for people to have a meal and then go for a promenade to go for a walk after the meal. But today we sit in front of the computer with food and after food. Don't take the escalator, take the stair instead. Every time I go flying, I'm amazed at the, especially the big international airports, how no one takes the stair, everyone's on the escalator. It's incredible. Next time you're at a, at a shopping center, have a look how many people take the escalator as opposed to the stair. Regular movements such as walking, swimming and dancing all help to move food through the digestive system, stimulate the metabolism and aid in weight loss. Point number nine, alcohol and tobacco are the two biggest enemies of the digestive system. You'll never beat candida if you can't give up alcohol for at least four months, end of story. I've spoken about this many times in my videos. Those who are serious about their health will know that cigarette smoking is just crazy anyway. I'm very surprised how many patients I've seen with yeast infections who want to continue smoking and drinking, yet still want to beat their yeast infection. It is not likely to happen, and the day you're prepared to become disciplined and say no to these destructive habits is the day your health will change for the better. So once your candida has improved significantly, you can drink socially again, it's not a problem. I'm not the alcohol police, don't get me wrong. I really do enjoy a glass of wine from time to time. But those times are, are, are spaced quite far apart. Number 10, Julie, this is an important one. Learn the art of relaxation. 
Right, I've done some videos before explaining the connection with stress and the digestive system. The sympathetic or fight or flight stimulates uh, the body you know, to rally up against the stress. It has the ability to make us think with more clarity and make us acutely alert you know, of the potential uh, danger. Uh, and it pushes blood to the large limb so we can escape the danger and it accelerates our heart rate. But the parasympathetic is the one that we want to uh, push up because the sympathetic also dumbs down the digestive system. It pushes the immune function down and digestive down. And what we want to do is push ourselves into the rest and digest or the relaxation part, okay, because this is going to improve digestive function, reduce blood pressure, calm the mind, stop anxiety, you know, from forming, increase our energy, boost our immune function, and stimulate our stomach and pancreas to produce the enzymes we need to really digest food properly. You can't digest food in any kind of stressful situation. So the art of relaxation is paramount in overcoming candida and small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and leaky gut syndrome. Any kind of functional gut disorder is not going to respond really well unless you learn the art of relaxation. It's a key thing I teach my patients. So I'll talk a lot more about the effects of stress you know, in other videos, obviously. Number 11, understand your digestive habits. If you have recurring digestive problems and just can't get a handle on them, then try to use a diary or a daily journal to write down what you're eating along with any increase or reduction in digestive symptoms you experience. Sometimes it is only the simple things in your diet and lifestyle you have to change in order to get an amazing improvement on health. One of my patients recently, a lovely man um, in his mid, I think he's in his mid to late 50s, and I think he's also in Carolina. He might be in South Carolina. He's a lovely guy. And he said to me, Eric, every time I go to bed, I get bloating and gas. I can't work out what it is. Does that sound like someone from Carolina? They talk quite sort of relaxed and slow there, I believe. They're lovely people. Anyway, I said to, to Bob, I'll just call him Bob. I said to Bob, well, Bob, what are you eating in the afternoon or early evening? What are you eating? And he said, well, you know what? I like hummus. I like making up some guacamole or some hummus. And most afternoons I have that. So I worked out he was having some corn chips with a mix with a lot of chickpea in it and garlic. And once we cut that out in the afternoon, guess what? The bloating and gas went away. Simple. Okay? Simple. So if you suffer recurring from bloating and gas, think back to what you were eating previous. It could well be a food. It may be a combination of a few dietary indiscretions you're consuming simultaneously, or you may be eating too late or too fast. Either way, by keeping a symptom diary, you'll be in a powerful position to establish the link between cause and effect. Okay, point number 12. Don't treat yourself. Go to a naturopath or a doctor, preferably an integrative medical doctor, someone who's got knowledge on functional health disorders. Most medical doctors focus on sickness and disease. They don't look at the function. They wait till the functions basically turn to custard and when disease develops, that's when they start treating the condition. This is not a good idea. Don't take your car to a mechanic when it's stuffed, when it's not working anymore. Take your car to a mechanic when you get the smallest inkling something's wrong. You hear a tiny noise repetitively. Something about the car doesn't feel right. And then you take it to the mechanic and he or she finds out the brakes are faulty. Uh, you know, or there's a problem with the engine. It could be a quick fix at low cost, and it could save your life. Same with you, all right? You may have a funny symptom at the moment that's going on right now bothering you. Get it checked out. Talk to someone. Talk to a friend. You know, go and get a proper blood analysis or, or get things checked out before it turns you know, pear-shaped on you. Okay, so you've made all the necessary changes. You're exercising regularly, learning to relax, drinking more water, eating plenty of fiber, eating lean meats, you're chewing properly, but you still don't feel quite right. May I suggest you contact your naturopath or nutritionally minded natural medical doctor. You may need testing for food allergies or intolerances. You may have an underlying bacterial or parasite problem. It could be any one of a dozen different hidden causes that need you know, thorough examination. And uh, as I say, it could be a quick fix for you. you know? Simple solution uh, to a simple problem. So I hope that's given you some insight, Julie, in how to get your digestive system right. But the last thing I'll leave you with, the most important thing is, 
you need to get the digestion as good as you possibly can. If your digestion and bowel are functioning optimally, you're going to feel fantastic. You're going to have great energy, you're going to have good sleep, you're going to have good libido, everything's going to work well for you. And you're going to age naturally over time, but you're not going to have this sickness all the time. Most people I see are chronically unwell, have got chronic digestive problems. And they basically ignored symptoms for many years. Lots of people I see with candida and SIBO try and self-treat. They try and take all kinds of pills all over the internet. They try all these weird diets and stuff like that. And then they come to me 5 or 10, 20 years down the track and they're still not well. I've treated thousands of people successfully and I find, again, simple diet you know, solutions. If you go and have a look at my YouTube channel, which you're on now, you're going to find a lot of, of hints and tips and self-help advice that's going to help you recover from this condition. So you can consult with me. Um, if you go to ericbacker.com, you can, you can do consultation. You can do my yeast infection quiz if you go to yeastinfection.org. You can get my book. You can check out uh, my YouTube channel and also my uh, thousand odd articles on yeastinfection.org. I pride myself now in having probably the online's best resource for Candida. I've worked in this field for nearly 30 years and uh, I've made my income already through investments and other things I do, but I love doing this kind of work with people. So I've chosen YouTube now as a, as a great way to educate people. Don't forget also um, I've developed some really nice products up called Canzida. So I'm not here to push the products on you at all, but after being in the field for a long, long time, I think I've created um, some of the best products for bacterial infection in the gut, for parasites, for food allergies, uh, for leaky gut syndrome, for candida, and they work well, and we're getting really nice feedback. That's candida.com. So thanks for your question, Julie. Thank you.